Hi, I'm Dan Cordopassi. Welcome to Model Building Tips. In this episode, I'm going to talk about reviving HO scale diesels that have been stored for a long period of time. In a previous episode of Model Building Tips, I talked about reviving stored N scale locomotives. In this episode, I'm going to tackle a couple of HO scale models. Some HO scale models are over lubricated at the factory. Over time, the lubricant can harden and make the mechanism seize up. Other engines sometimes suffer from not enough lubricant. Older Proto 2000 models can also have cracked axle gears that will make the engine run poorly. Before we get into the actual repairs, I want to talk about HO scale diesel truck designs. Whether a truck has two or three axles, or if it represents an EMD, GE, or ALCO, or whatever, many if not most plastic HO scale diesels use some variation on one of two basic truck designs. The first is the Athern Blue Box style, which Athern has been using for years and still uses in some of its models. Proto 2000 also copied this design for some of its models, and there may be others. The Athern style truck has the axle bearings on the inside of the wheels. The axle bearings hold the axles in place and are also part of the electrical path to get current from the track to the engine. On these trucks, the side frames are purely cosmetic. You can take them off and the truck will still function. It'll look weird, but it'll work. The other design is what I think of as the Kato style. I'm not sure if Kato was the first manufacturer to use this design or not, but that's what I'm calling it. Many models, including some Athern, Atlas, Kato, some Proto 2000, Rapido, Scale Trains, and others use some variation of this design. This style of truck has the axle bearings on the outside. These copper strips on the side frames have holes in them that hold the axles and are part of the electrical path. With this style of truck, the side frames are an integral part and the truck won't function without them. I've selected examples of each to use in this program, two identical Proto 2000 GP20s and a Kato SD40. Even if you have a different model, the cleaning process should be similar to these examples. I'll start with the Proto 2000 GP20 that has its shell off. Proto 2000 used to ship their locomotives that way, with the shell separate to be installed by the modeler. This one was still like this in the box when I got it, so it's probably never been used. Despite that, it has issues because of its age. This model has the Athern style inside bearing trucks. Since both GP20s are actually models of the same engine, to avoid confusion I'm going to put the shell away and just deal with the chassis for this one. This locomotive is frozen solid. When I apply power, the motor just buzzes. If you have an engine like this, don't keep giving it throttle hoping it'll work. That'll just stress and possibly damage the motor. I can't even turn the flywheels by hand. These should spin easily. The other GP20 tries to run but makes clunking noises that sometimes cause it to run jerkily. This is a likely sign of cracked axle gears. Both problems can be fixed at the same time, so from here on I'll just use the one GP20 without the shell as my example. This thing is so old there's no DCC plug of any kind on the light board. I'll need to remove this to disassemble the model. There are three wire clips that need to be detached. One is for the motor and the other two are for the trucks. Once that's done, the whole board plus the light bulbs will come out. On the underside, there are small Phillips screws at each end behind the draft gear boxes that have to come out. The fuel tank is held on with some really strong double-sided tape. I'll confess that I loosened mine before this shot. I had to work it off carefully to avoid damaging the fuel tank. You might need to dig through what's left of the tape to see them, but there are two brass screws that need to be loosened with a small flat-bladed screwdriver. After all that's done, the weight will separate from the chassis. Now I can remove the trucks. I'll use a small flat-bladed screwdriver to pry off the worm gear covers. Before I continue, look at the congealed lubricant on the gear. This has the consistency of putty. There's more congealed lubricant inside the worm gear covers. I'll remove the worm gears and universals. Now the motor spins easily. The problem is definitely in the gears. I'll remove the trucks. These actually roll, though not as freely as they should. The drive shaft bearings are another story. The outer one still spins, but the one behind the gear doesn't want to move at all. It's time to start cleaning. First, I'll use a little isopropyl alcohol and a micro brush to clean the shaft behind the inner bearing. I'll insert a hobby knife into the gap between the bearing and the gear to wedge them apart. This can take some force, so be careful. Look at all the congealed gunk in there. I'll clean this area with more alcohol. I'll also remove the thrust washer behind the front bearing and clean it. Be careful not to lose it. The rear thrust washer is a little more difficult since it has to be cleaned in place. A hobby knife can work as a scraper. After working at it with a micro brush and alcohol for a few minutes, the bearings spin again. I'll set these parts aside for now. The old lubricant inside the gear covers also needs to be cleaned out. A small screwdriver, paper towels, and a micro brush with alcohol are all useful for this task. Next, I'll disassemble the trucks. I like to work on one at a time. 
I'll start by using a small flat bladed screwdriver with a twisting motion to pry off the side frames. Be careful as you don't want to break the pin on the back that fits into the mechanical part of the truck. This black plastic piece should now come off easily. The trucks are held together by the top and bottom covers which engage clips on the sides. A small screwdriver is useful for prying these loose. It's a good idea to clean the insides of the covers. With the covers off, the axle assemblies should fall out. The two halves of the truck frame will come apart. There's a lot of old lubricant in here as well. Before I clean that, let's look at the axles. The gears have longitudinal cracks that prevent them from gripping the wheels tightly. This one is so loose it fell out of gauge on its own. I shouldn't be able to do this, spinning one wheel while holding the other. Cracked gears make power transfer to the axles erratic and can make the engine run very badly. Thankfully, the Proto 2000 diesels that have this problem use Atherin clone trucks, meaning that Atherin replacement parts will fit. This is Atherin Part 60024, Loco Axle Drive Gears. It says it's for an SD40-2, but these are the correct parts for many Atherin models as well as Proto 2000 diesels that have this truck design. If the gears are bad, the wheels should pull out easily. After discarding the old gears, I'll clean the wheels and bearings. Even if the gears in your Proto 2000 model aren't cracked yet, I'd recommend replacing them when you have the engine apart like this. It'll save having to do this job again later. The only exception would be if you know that the gears have been replaced already. Atherin gears don't usually have this issue. It can take a little force to press the new gear onto the half axles. Adjust the spacing until the wheels are engaged according to the NMRA standards gauge. There should be a slight gap between the end of the gear and the axle bearing on each side so that the bearings are free to turn. If the gear is too tight to one side, it may act like a brake and keep the bearing from spinning. Now I can turn my attention to the gearboxes. As you can see, there's quite a bit of crud in there. I'll use the same techniques to scrape, wipe, and swab the parts until they're clean. An old toothbrush also works well for this job. Now that the gearbox is clean, it's ready to be re-lubricated and reassembled. The two larger gears are interchangeable. I'm using some Labelle 106 plastic compatible white grease on the gears. I'm putting a tiny dab of white grease on each of the gear spindles. Always make sure to use plastic compatible lubricants on model trains, as some oils and greases will attack the plastic parts. Now I'll reassemble the truck halves. I'll reattach the top cover to hold the halves together. I've put a tiny dab of white grease on one of the gears. This will work its way into the gear train as the engine moves. Then I can drop in the axles. The square bearings need to be rotated until they fall into the axle slots. I'll reattach the bottom cover. This is some Atlas Conductolube, a plastic compatible conductive oil. I'll put a tiny drop of this on each of the axle bearings. Now the truck should roll freely. If there's any stiffness, something is wrong. This next step is optional, but it falls under the easier to do it now while the model is apart category. I'm going to paint the wheel faces with some testers railroad tie brown, though any medium to dark brown would work. Now I can reassemble the model. Before I reattach the worm gear covers, I'll put a drop of plastic compatible oil on the worm bearings. I'll also put a drop on the bearings at each end of the motor. The mechanism spins easily now. Of course, the real test is to see how well the chassis works on track power after it's been reassembled. This is working very well now. I performed the same cleaning and re-lube on the engine with the shell, and now that one works well too. The Kato SD40 runs, but it's sluggish. Kato doesn't usually over-lubricate its locomotives like Proto 2000, but this one has been stored for quite a while, so it still needs some maintenance. If this one still had its couplers, I'd have to remove them. Really old Kato models have plastic pins instead of screws that hold the couplers. These can be removed with pliers, and then you can remove the couplers. Now I can remove the shell. Kato shells typically have clips that hold them to the frame, which is why it's sometimes a little difficult to separate the parts. This engine is also old enough that it doesn't have a DCC socket. Before I remove the trucks, I'll need to detach the clips that connect the truck wires to the light board. I'll use a thin, flat-bladed screwdriver from underneath to unclip the gearbox covers. Now I'll remove the drive shafts. The truck should come out easily after this. As with the Proto 2000, the motor spins freely without the drive shafts, so I don't think there's any problem there. One of the trucks barely rolls and the other is only a little better. They're hard to see, but Kato-style trucks typically have clips on the bottom gearbox cover. A small screwdriver can be used to undo these. I usually start on one side and one end. Be careful with these as on older models they can become brittle and snap off. Once I have one side loose, I wedge a second screwdriver in it. Then I can work on the other side without the first one snapping back together. I work from one end of the truck to the other. Doing this takes some patience, but eventually the bottom cover will come off. With the cover loose, the side frames will pull off. Now we can get a better look at the copper strips that hold the axles. 
Make sure not to bend these as it can throw the wheels out of alignment and cause derailments. I'll gently pull them off. Now the wheels should just fall out. This truck style also uses half shaft wheels with a plastic gear in the center. This truck design doesn't typically have the cracked gear problem though. I seldom have out of gauge wheels with Kato, but it's still a good idea to check them while the model is apart. These trucks have small screws that hold the gearbox together. This time, instead of too much lubricant, it looks like there's none at all. The gearboxes are completely dry. Since this is already clean, I don't need to remove any old lubricant. I'm going to put a tiny dab of white grease on one end of each gear shaft. I'll admit I was a little nervous at first because the gears fell out before I could make a note of where they go. Fortunately, in this particular truck, they're all the same except for the smaller one here. Before I put the gearbox back together, I'll put a dab of white grease on the other end of each gear shaft. It's a good idea to make sure the gears rotate freely. Since the second gearbox also looks clean, I'm going to leave it together and lubricate it in a different way. I'm using a piece of wire to put small dabs of white grease on the ends of the gear shafts. Some of the gear shaft holes are accessible from the outside. Again, this is optional, but now is a good time to paint the wheel faces. With outside bearing trucks like these, be careful to keep paint away from the axle ends. As I reassemble the trucks, I'll put a tiny drop of conductor lube on the ends of the axles. I'm using the lube very sparingly. I'll also put a small dab of white grease on the gears. The trucks roll much more freely now. The wheel treads look a little dirty and I got a little paint on them in a couple spots. I'll polish them with a wire brush attachment and my motor tool. I'm holding the brush at an angle so that the bristles are moving from the inside of the wheel toward the outside. That way it won't scrape any paint from the wheel faces. I'll use the toothbrush dry to get rid of some foreign material that was stuck in there. Just like with the other model, I'll put a little oil on the worm gear bearings before I finish reassembly. I'll also put a little oil on the motor bearings. The chassis runs much better now. It's quieter and the sluggishness is gone. At slow speeds, it's virtually silent. This is how a Kato should run. Old diesels can still have a lot of life in them. Sometimes they just need a little bit of maintenance. If you like this video, then please like and subscribe. Stay tuned and thanks for watching. <laughs>